for, for the homework, which I'm going to post, I'm not yet uh, drafted it, but I'm, I have this in mind, which is uh, I'm going to give you a homework on uh, the passive walker. But now it's going to be not passive, but it will be controlled walker going downhill. Okay, and what I mean by that is there's still going to be a, a plane. There's still going to be a, a walker. This is one of the legs. And then there's going to be another leg. Like this. Now, what, I what I've done is uh, I've assumed that, so this is like a hybrid of the hopping model and the, the passive walker. The passive walker went down a hill and you had no control whatsoever. The passive hopper, on the other hand, had this thing, which is you could only set the foot placement angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to task you with, well, let's say that we want to control this angle. Okay, at every step, you control that angle to be whatever value you want, the foot placement angle. You That's the only control you have. And then you ignore the, the dynamics of the swing leg because let's say that you can control that in any way you want. So you're just going to set the swing leg angle to the foot placement angle. And if you set it right, this walker will walk downhill without falling down. Actually, let me not choose theta because I'm going to use theta for that one. Let's call it phi. Okay, so this hopper in general has two coordinates, theta and then phi, x, y, and then you can write the equations for this. It's in a way, this is actually the rimless wheel, right? If, because rimless wheel, all, all that matters is that um, there are there's a spoke and that spoke is sticking at an angle, which is two pi divided by the number of spokes. In this case, in case of rimless wheel, you cannot change the spoke angle, but in this case, you can change the, the fee. So the fee is foot placement angle. And you have full control on this. You can set it to any value you want, just like you set it for the hopper. Okay, so now what we're going to talk about is if you have a Poincare section, okay, now again, reminding you, we used uh, a Poincare section at heel strike for the rimless wheel as well as for the passive walker. However, for the hopper, we've used the Poincare section, the apex. In this case, it's actually advantageous to use the Poincare section at the apex. And my apex is slightly not defined this way. So this is this is one way of thinking of the apex. This is gravity, which points downwards. And if the angle is uh, such that the leg is vertical, that's an apex. We'll use a different apex in this case. We'll use the apex such that the hopper, the walker is uh, at right angles to the plane. So gravity is still this way, but the theta, which is the angle made with, with the plane is going to be zero. Okay, so this is, Actually, theta is minus gamma. It's not zero. Here it is zero. So this is going to be our Poincare section. Okay. So this is theta equals zero. So if you start here, you go and then you come back. Okay. So let's say start at theta i. And then you come back at let me get a different color for this. This is theta i. And then this is theta i plus one. So in this case, well, okay, at the apex, there are two states, theta zero and theta dot, right? Theta zero is what it is, theta zero at the apex. So theta, there's no point in specifying a theta i. It's not theta i, which is a variable. It's theta dot, which is variable. And then at the next apex, you have theta i. So at the, at the Poincare section, you only have one state, which is that velocity. Now, what you can do is during the step, you can set phi okay, to whatever you want. The phi is a foot placement angle. So if you want to think of this in terms of Poincare map or Poincare's, uh, Poincare maps, then you would write something like this, theta dot i plus one equals f times theta dot i and phi i. Okay, this should be, by the way, phi i. Okay, this is by the way, what you get for the passive, sorry, this is for the walker, not passive, but control. For the hopper, what we wrote is, 
we have actually two states. We have x dot i plus one and apex height equals an F. This is a different F clearly. And that's going to be a two by one matrix actually. It'll have x dot i and uh, y i as two states. And then the control was p i. So there are two states. and one control. Okay, so that's for the hopper, but for the walker, which I just drew here, it's even more simple. So that makes it more easier to derive a controller. So in this case, we have one state at the Poincare section, another state, and this is our control. Okay, now for this one, for the hopper, we used a Rybert controller which basically set phi i as some function of the parameters, right? String constant, mass, and so on. And it also used the apex state. So it only used x dot i, right? That was the only information it needed. Note that y i is not used, right? The apex height is not used, but only the apex velocity is used. Okay, now let's take our uh, case now here, which we are going to do for homework. Let me copy this. Okay, so then the question is for us, Can you find a phi i, okay? And there's a different uh, function that's called g. So given the velocity at mid stance, this is the velocity of the stance leg. Can you basically find g, that is a controller such that you get a phi i. So in case of Rybert controller, there was that function, which I wrote down here. I think I wrote, did I write F? I shouldn't write F here, so it just gets confusing. Let's call it G. So this was the the control law, which I showed you, which is which is basically had that sine inverse things plus K times that. So that was, that came from intuition, right? The question is, can we come up with the G like this with intuition? So you could think of that. That's one way to do it. Find G from, physics and intuition. You could, you could, uh, you could actually try uh, linear control. What I mean by that is, what if I assume phi i to be theta dot i minus theta, theta desired, or a, sorry, I, I should have put a constant. On there. So kp, k times, Okay, will it work? I don't know. Okay, um, so there's another way to do it, which is you can use brute force and that's what I would recommend doing. So what we do here is we have two steps or two stages, steps would be the wrong uh, word for walking, two stages. So first stage is data generation. So what you do is you run this, simulation a number of times. So you put in input different values. This is the simulator. And then um, this is the output. So if you put different inputs, so let's say theta i, phi i, and you run the simulator, it will produce an output. So you give this, it'll give that. It'll give the, you give this, give that. And you can just keep doing that. So now we have a, a table, right? And then if you want to find a controller, 
all you need to do is look up that table to find the controller which will do its job. So for example, if you want the controller to follow a reference velocity, so where theta dot desired is given, then you just read off that uh, table to find the right controller. Uh, so then once you do this, once you have the table, creating the controller is, is quite simple because then you just read off the table. So your homework is going to be basically generating this table and then controlling the system. Okay, so this is one way to do it. I think this one is worth trying. And the other thing you can do is once you have this table, say theta, So our table looks like this, uh, theta i, and I'm gonna write it slightly differently now, theta dot i plus one, u of phi i. So you given this, you'll give this input, it'll produce that output, or you can rearrange the columns to be like this. So you get something like this. Now, what you can do is, you can try to find a formula for the control and let me call that u par, this is something you're coming up with, such that, so given theta dot i, and given your desired theta dot i plus one, so this will be uh, measured because at every apex you measure the velocity at the apex. This is given, which is the same as theta dot desired. So you, let's say you want to go at 0.5 meters per second, this step, next step, you want to go one meter. So that's given to you. You need to find a controller. So there is probably a, there's probably a mapping, a function which you can find. So then the question is, how will you find uh, you? You could start with linear polynomial. You could do quadratic. There are some other uh, ways to fit. This is basically a regression problem. So you could fit it with neural network. So these are what are known as parametric methods to fit the controller. There are non-parametric methods like uh, Gaussian process regression. Okay, this is non-parametric. By that I mean there are no free parameters in this. It basically tries to go live with the data. So there are two parts to the homework. One part would be to use a table. So homework, I think it's the seventh homework, two parts. One, table lookup. Two, find a controller u bar, okay? And then how you do it is up to you. So this is like opening up the space of things you can do now with the homework. Because, um, seven, these are some of the files I created. And there are two files you need to work with. One is called Walker Data Generation. And the other file is Walker Main, okay? The Walker Data Generation file can be used to generate data. So what you can do is you can give it an initial velocity. So this is the, this is the same as theta dot i and this is your phi i so give it a theta dot i phi i run it it basically produce the one step okay so it basically gives you the input your inputs were the phi the angle which is pi by pi divided by six initial velocity it gave you the output which is the velocity at the next uh, step which is negative 0.85 Okay, so this is can this is now one of your line for your uh, table. Okay, you can do this for ideally you want to run a, a loop and generate put in a bunch of inputs and get a bunch of outputs, right? Now sometimes it will happen that this thing will fall. Let's try minus one and run this. That was fine. Let's try minus uh, four. Okay, so when sometimes simulation fails because if you are going too fast, then the leg can take off the ground. And then in this case, the walking equations are no longer valid. You have a flight phase. And so you need to be aware of that. So I actually programmed all that for you. 
when the simulation fails this flag which it outputs will be equal to uh, will be greater than so it'll actually give you if, if, if it is zero it means everything is fine if the flag is not zero it's failed and you should not use that data data in for your table because that is a failed simulation okay so you should not use this so here actually it prints what where it failed and then it also should print the flag okay you can make it print the flag so you should collect data but be mindful that sometimes simulation fails and you should not take the data so that will be the table data generation part once you figure out the data generation and you found a, a table you can use this file to code the uh, code the controller so in this case you need walker main and you need this thing called controller so you will basically provide the reference speeds here and then here is where you put the controller so you put your control whatever your table lookup or your formula you put it here so every time it comes it queries with the velocity the withstand speed you tell it what to do in this case i just set it to pi divided by six but you will have a more complicated thing maybe a neural network or maybe a linear model whatever you want put it here and then it will basically simulate it for those number of steps so if you say five steps it will simulate five steps that is five steps okay here it's not doing anything smart it's just putting pi by six but you can make it do more, more smart things and then you probably need to in introduce another variable for uh, i shouldn't put this here walker dot um we desired so if you have 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 is that what you want then you should have something like this which is then used by the controller to figure out uh, what it needs to do right? so i would I, I put it in walker.vdes because then it'd be available here so you can see this and it'll actually have that into every step so, so it's it's whatever you put here is automatically produced at the controller because it's inputting walker anyway so this is what i expect you to do and this is basically uh, well what i would want you to do is basically want it to follow a uh, reference velocity so if you are able to follow the reference velocity very closely that means you have succeeded and if you are not following the reference velocity like you saw in the hopper where it, it was over correcting under correcting that means it's not a good controller so then this is this basically makes it into more of a an open uh, design problem control design problem then being very uh, uh, closed in terms of what you are supposed to do okay